to the KW Investor Group uh, meeting for July. I'm um, going to keep my intro short and sweet so we can hear from our keynote speaker. Yes, yes, yes. Um, but I do want to congratulate Steve Rupp, longtime listener, first time caller. <laughs> uh, <he's actually laughs> officially under contract on his first event. So we also have a milestone on the fact that our keynote, Pam Jones, successfully flipped a house, which is very nice. exciting. And so that is going to be uh, our main topic today. And without further ado, I will intro Pam Jones of our office. Okay, I do have notes. So if I look at these, just to be sure, I don't forget to tell you things that you shouldn't do when you're doing a flip because the, we decided to buy a flip last fall. And this is the house behind us here. I have a slideshow just to show you some of the things we did to the house. And then I'll have her stop on some of them to tell you things that we should have known that we didn't know. So I'd say the hardest thing being a new person and trying to do a flip is what you don't know because it costs you money. And um, we were very fortunate. I told someone on the elevator, we made quite, we made like 60,000, 61,000 on this flip. The market had a lot to do with that. Our initial projection was we would sell it for two, I said 235, my son said 250. Thank God we sold it for 290 because we wouldn't have made 60,000. We would have barely even covered our costs because of issues that happened during the way, during things going on. So you want to go ahead and start that. Mm -hmm. Um, so we bought the house in October, paid cash for it, but what we did for our cash is we had a credit line access with our investor, investment um, group, and we did have to pay like 4% interest on there. Um, just go ahead and stop this real quick. So it wasn't like free, but it wasn't like if you just take money out and pay for cash and you don't have a payment every month. Well, as I was going through and figuring out our costs, I forgot that I had payments to them every month. So, and then when I realized, well, yeah, we're going to be paying that, that's an extra $400 a month that I wasn't expecting in my calculations. Then we also went out six months instead of four months. So all those kind of costs I'm going to go through on here with you, it really start adding up because people just think, oh, the house costs X, it's going to cost me X to fix it, and then I'm going to sell it. Well, they forget about when I sell it, I have closing costs. When I buy it, I have closing costs. I have insurance. I have all these things. So those really start adding up and eat into your profit. So that needs to be figured in when you're buying the house. So this is the house we bought. We're going to start it. Um, it was a client of mine's mother who bought it. We had to redo the outside. That's the backyard when we got finished. The first picture was the backyard. Whenever we started, it cost us a little more to clean up the backyard than I thought it was going to. I bought it with everything in it. I told my client, you, I can sell it for you. You'll have realtor fees. All these other things, you might make 15000 more, uh, maybe 20000 more, but you will have to get it cleaned out. I'm not going to just take care of the painting for you if I don't buy it. I said, if I buy it, turnkey, I'm closing two weeks, you give me, oh, you want me to? You're okay. Okay. I'm um, closing two weeks, you give me the keys and walk away. And we will get someone in to clean all this out and be sure that you don't have to do anything. She opted for that. Her mother was going into a nursing home. So it was a great to know that for her. It should just cycle through. Okay. Stop. Um, you know, we had to rip everything out. We ended up putting uh, LVP flooring in the house or original hardwoods because we got started looking at them. They weren't in great shape. We thought we could refinish them. This is the end product. I have to get there were different floor levels once we started looking at if we used um, the original hardwoods in one place and then changed over the tile somewhere else and it got really expensive. So the LVP was the cheapest way for us to go. The dining room, we started taking off wallpaper. There were three layers of wallpaper, which we didn't know. So it cost us more to remove the wallpaper. We took walls out and this is how we ended up. Uh, there were little doorways in between the living room and dining room, arch doors. We took all those out and opened up the spaces. Um, some of them were load-bearing, so we had to go put headers in. 
up in the attic. Luckily, it was a one story home, so we were able to do that. The kitchen was a disaster. I uh, completely gutted that and started over and ended up putting pan lights all throughout. And some of these things we had not planned to do, but as you get into it, you start thinking, oh, this would be better. Well, then it's a change order, um, and change orders cost money. <coughs> So the money just starts ticking up. Uh, this was the master bedroom. It was covered with paneling. We thought they were going to um, actually completely drywall the whole room after they took the paneling off. But when they got the paneling off, they realized it just kind of like stapled up there. So they were able to just skim the walls and then paint it for us. So we ended up just had to change out the lighting. Uh, the master bedroom didn't cost us near as much. It had beams in the beginning, but they were styrofoam beams, so they just pulled down. So we thought those were going to be more expensive, but it wasn't. This was tiled all the way around on the walls. Again, a lot more expensive to fix than we thought, because when they pulled it off, the drywall was um, The contractors we had were awful. The drywall work was terrible, so we ended up having to fire them down the road. Um, and have somebody come back in and help us with What's their name? I will give you that name before, before we leave. Um, I would not let anyone to do so. Um, this was a tiny little bathroom, which we expanded the shower. And the shower was so bad, we asked them to rip it out and do it, which they wouldn't do, but we were able to fix it. Um, I don't know that. That's a finished basement. It was uh, like a burlap all the way around the top. So we were thinking about drywalling over it. Instead, we skimmed it, did a skim coat, and they were able to just paint it all and put new carpet downstairs, and it turned out great. So that was a big selling point whenever we did the house. So, I mean, at the end of the day, everything turned out great, but it was um, kind of one headache after the other. This was a sun porch they had, and that glass sliding door went to a garage. So if you sat out there, you were looking at cars. So we had that whole wall knocked out and just turned it more into a sunroom. <coughs> then the skylights started leaking on us, <laughs> so we had, this, had the skylights fixed. Um, it's contingency money that we need to add in that we didn't do and stop that there. So we bought it for 130 and we thought it would cost us sixty thousand to do everything. So we took one hundred ninety thousand dollars out. At the end of the day, I was pulling money out of our personal account just to keep us going. Um, we ended up two hundred twenty-eight thousand in the property, which my initial thought was we'd get two thirty-five. If that had happened, we wouldn't have lost money. So I guess it, you know, we would have been okay. But luckily, we were able to list it. I think we listed at two eighty, and we sold for two ninety. Um, we were going on the market. Originally, we thought we'd be on the market in January, which probably wouldn't have been great timing anyway. Instead, we went on the market in March, and the market was crazy in March. So um, we actually sold it once. The buyer walked away, but we had two other backup offers, and we're able to get this closed in April. But cost-wise, we had to carry it two months longer than we were expecting, which when you have your carrying costs with insurance and utilities and your taxes, everything just keeps going. So um, I'm going to go over a few things that we learned through the process, and I have a list of them here. So the first thing is don't overpay. Um, it's really easy when you go look at a house, and your first thought is, "Wow, we can go in and put fifty thousand, and this is going to be great, and we're going to make X number of dollars." But like I said, most people are not thinking about all those extra costs. You carry costs with your insurance. I know when we um, were looking at insurance, you have to get vacant home insurance, which is more expensive than a typical home that you're going to live in. So that was more money than I thought. We had to pay a year up front with a policy I got, and I have on my list here. I wish we had done more research into insurance carriers. So if you're looking at doing a flip, I would call around and get ideas on who is the best person to go with. And we paid twenty eight hundred dollars for a year. I had to pay it all up front, and then we sold the house. We got half of it back. Uh, my guy told me there was there were people out there that were less expensive, but he said, you know, I can go through all this with you. And at the time, I said, just just do it. I just want to know I'm covered because then he started throwing out the what ifs. Well, if this happens, you're not covered. And if this happens, you're not covered. And I just I'd never done it before, so I didn't know what ifs I needed to worry about. So I wanted to be sure we were covered no matter what. Um, 
everyone in here probably has insurance people they work with, I would say call and start. And they may not be the best person for this type of property, but if not, hopefully they would tell you, you may want to call such and such and talk to somebody. Um, I love my insurance guy, but he was real honest. He said, yeah, who we put you with probably wasn't the least expensive person to be with. So at the end of the day, it's all about cutting costs. And I, I didn't go into it with that. I thought I did with that mindset, but then I found out later there were a lot of things I didn't know. Um, so the, the number two on here was research insurance companies to be sure. It's not like it's a lot of money, but $1,000 is $1,000 if you can save that. Um, time is money. Those extra two months that we had on the market, while the market was great and it may have helped us in this situation, I don't think that's always the case. I think really you're wanting to get it you know, closed, get your contractors in, get the work going. We were told by our contractor that he would be done in two months. Not even close. Uh, two months, so we thought, okay, two months he'll be done. We'll spend you know, a couple of weeks to get it staged, clean, you know, even if it's just a week, and then we'll be on the market, we thought, before Christmas originally. <clears throat> and then as it kept going, we realized that wasn't happening. Um, we just figured out later that I should have let him go a lot sooner. Because the longer you're on the market, the more you know, our utilities we went through the winter with gas. So we had that um, that we weren't expecting. I did have an inspection, which I would say, I know some people don't like to do inspections or like, we'll just buy it and go. We have some investors we work with and we're saying, even if even if you know you're gonna buy it anyway, know what your problems are going in. You're gonna run into more, but at least you have an idea in your head, okay, these costs have to be done. We knew the furnace and AC had to be replaced. So that was one of our biggest expenses, and that was like seven thousand um, dollars. I'd say there were four items which cost us about fifteen thousand dollars: the cabinets, the um, furnace and AC that had to go in, and uh, another uh, floor. Materials. I had no idea what materials cost. So when this guy told me he could do the job for thirty-eight thousand, like, wow, that's awesome. All of a sudden, I started pricing things and realized, oh, that doesn't include, I didn't read the contract. <laughs> so I would say read your contract if you're going to be doing this with your contractor, because there were a few things he did include, but the majority of them weren't. And some of the wording was such that I thought it was, but if I read it closer, it wasn't. Um, the tile, I thought when he said tile included in the bathrooms, I thought that meant the tile. He meant the tile work. So there was a discrepancy there. Um, and I told him he needed to be more clear in his contracts on how he wrote those. So just <clears throat> more materials uh, than I was expecting whenever we were getting into this. So that also ate into our cost. How many of you guys have done flips in here? <clears throat> I see a lot of you. So you've, you've ran into the same things. Um, uh, contractors, we, in the industry, I N D Y U S T R I A L. That's the company we started with. And we went with them because it was a friend of my son's had bought into this company. He was using them for his own flips. And he said, hey, with your first flip, you have, you guys want to use them, I'll give you some of our guys. Worst decision ever. We ended up having one person at the property every day, just one, to do a whole house. Um, there were three people cleaning it out. And after that, there would be one guy there. And he had to rip out everything he did. So my husband, who was in commercial real estate, I don't listen to him very well. And he kept telling me, get rid of these guys. They're not going to get any better. And I just thought that if I was there and was watching it, that I could improve the work they were doing and just keep moving forward. Uh, and so four months later, we're firing them. Um, and that became a whole other issue. Um, we ended up not having to get attorneys, but this it was a young man that owned the company. And he called and told me, that he had very deep pockets and I wouldn't be getting any more of his business. And I'm like, don't tell me you have deep pockets when I'm thinking about suing you. I said, that's not what I said, so you have a lot of things to learn. Um, but he wasn't watching his people. So when, when you're on the company and you don't watch the people under you, they're telling you one thing. So I mean, I had pictures, I had documents. I think I sent him a hundred pictures of things that were wrong. Um, it cost us $20,000 to bring somebody new in. To fix everything that this guy did wrong. He explained to me that I was not your typical flipper because in his mind the quality of work did not matter. So and I may not be. Wow. But for me, if I'm gonna flip a house, I want to know that whoever's moving into it 
is going to enjoy the house. It's if I was building it for myself or my family members. I may not put the same quality because I'm not building a six or seven hundred thousand dollar house. If I was, I would put those kind of things in there. But the workmanship still needs to be done wrong. We don't cut corners. So he told me I was slowing the job and I was causing it to go over budget because my expectations were too high for the work that I wanted to have done. <laughs> right. So and I'm like, okay, I'm not crazy. Uh, yeah. But, um, but I mean, if that's what you have to do with flip, then I'd be like, okay, well, I can't flip houses. Because you know those flippers, you go into the house and you can tell they just kind of put lipstick on a pen. And, and I didn't want to be that person. So that slowed us down a lot. The contract was just pretty bad. Um, as far as the inspection, we did find a lot of things during our inspection, uh, electrical items that had to be fixed, the furnace and AC was broken, fence work on, you know, out through the roof, those kind of, but we knew that we had to do those. So as I started working more on the budget, I was able to add those in. Of course, other things came up. We ended up having to redo all the plumbing these first people did and all the electrical things as well. And luckily, just like you guys, I'm in the business, so I knew what to look for or what questions to ask the contractors when they come in. If I hadn't, I think there were a lot of things that would have gone unknown. We had a shower that the pipe that came up into the the drain, I went in one day and actually pulled the, the metal piece off. It, the pipe wasn't even there. It was like two feet over. I don't know where it was going. So we had to pay someone to come cut all the pipes. And, but if I hadn't looked right. and it just sold the house that way, I don't know that they would have noticed it either until someone went to the crawl space and noticed that all the water from the shower was running down the crawl space. So just those kind of things. So vet your contractors. That's number six on my list. Um, and stop working with a bad contractor sooner rather than later. Um, I tend to just keep pushing, thinking that it's going to get better. But if you cut your losses early and then just move on, um, because again, time is of the essence, so that always goes together. Um, facing the renovations, I did a class online, and they were talking about people going in and over-improving a property to a flip, because personally, I like to go in and have, um, you know, quartz countertops, and I want to have uh, the black and all those kind of things, but that, if that's not what's selling in the area where your flip is, there's no need to do it. You don't. You don't need to be better than everyone else. You need to be as good as everybody else and maybe have a few things they don't, but just be as good as they are. So if you're in an area that doesn't need that, don't do it. We've had a couple of investors who've lost so much money because they thought they wanted the newest and greatest thing in there with the white appliances now and the black, and they're sitting on the market and they don't understand why. And it's because they overimproved it for the area they're in. So um, it's hard when you go out and you're shopping, you're like, oh, this is cool. But I found I can't think about what I want in my house. I have to think about what I need to do here to get it sold. Because still, it's about the money. And um, it's just easy to go over the board. Um, detailed files of communication. So with your contractors, I did really good about, I wanted everything in email. He liked to text a lot. And I would always ask them, if you could send that to me an email, please, because texts just aren't as great a line of communication if you're trying to follow up on things. So if you did send me texts, I would copy them, put them in an email, and then send something back to them. I, I was told once that if you have to go to court, the texts do not stand up in oh, really? emails. Oh, well, good. I'm glad I did that because I had no idea. But it's, it's just hard to follow that text chain. And they really to understand sometimes exactly what they're doing. And then you want to call me. And I'm like, don't call me. No. I just want it in an email so we know what's going on. So that's good to know about. Because um, everyone likes to text right now and it's right. fast. <clears throat> so, I mean, finally, I quit going to the job site because he told my son that I was the reason the job was slowed up. <laughs> my expectations were too high. I was asking too many questions. And I needed to leave them alone. So I stepped back. And my son was there taking care of things. Um, but then I said, right. it just went from bad to worse. And he, my son called. He said, you know what? He hates you, but he tends to work harder when you're there. So, <laughs> uh, so That's okay. why he hates you. Yeah. 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 So, um, so like I said, there was, there was, when we got ready to fire them, it was much easier because I had all the emails of things that I had asked for that had not been done. And um, change orders and things that they would do and not do them right. So they, they photos. I took pictures all the way through. 
I had hundreds of pictures of the property just so I can document what was done and what wasn't done right. I told you I was going to have all the things not to do. Yeah. Um, and then track your spending. <laughs> um, I think I got so frustrated at the end that I was just running out to Lowe's or running out somewhere and buying what was needed. Um, I felt like I needed to be more on top of getting materials to the house on time. He would tell me he was going to have something done, and then he'd call and say, oh, we're two weeks out. So then I wouldn't rush out to get the tile or whatever. And then he'd call me and say, the tile's not the house. We can't get started. <clears throat> and I, so my deal, the next one is, I'll know my material list, and I'm just going to go ahead and buy everything and have it sitting in the garage. And then there'll be no delay they can blame on me that I didn't have everything done. But, um, and just finding the materials, I think I could find probably better pricing. I'm sure some of you have great ideas, which maybe we'll discuss um, in just a second, like who you use for different things as far as cabinets and countertops, um, flooring, plumbing, you know, toilets and all those kind of things. I, you know, I was going to Lowe's and Menards because that's, that's who I knew. But there's probably other places to go that you can get things a little bit less expensive. I and mean, they also delivered and this contractor wasn't great about picking things up. Um, <laughs> here, we'll keep shaking the head. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, yeah. I just did do it. I just had five contractors on my last Oh, plate, you did? So. Okay. I know. And you just say, what fired, am I doing? Fired, fired, fired. Yeah. Right. And, you know, and the thing is, he did say he was going to call an attorney when, when I fired oh, him. Yeah. And I said that was fine. And the attorney I called told me, you know, he has 60 days <clears throat> to file me. And if he doesn't file it in 60 days, you're good. Move on. If he does file it, just call me. You have all the information. But he said we just have to file and get it taken off. So it's just a pain we didn't want to have to deal with whenever we went to sell. So I was kind of on pins and needles for 60 days, but we got it sold before then, and he didn't step up and do anything. I think he was worried we were going to sue them. So he kind of let it go. But um, yeah, the tracking the spending, I think at the end of the day, we spent more than we needed to. One, because I didn't track. Like the flooring, we had 10 boxes of flooring left over. I didn't realize I only had three months to return it with Lowe's, unless I had a Lowe's credit card. Mm -hmm. That Lowe's credit card, I think they have a year to return. So I'll probably go get a Lowe's credit card because we were waiting on them to do things and we sat on the products. So now I have eight boxes of flooring that hopefully we'll be able to again mm -hmm. with some house. Haven't done another one yet because my daughter got married this year and that mm -hmm. took all of our money. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're going back up for uh, hopefully the market's going to be better. I mean, what are y'all's thoughts as far as buying investment properties? Do you think it's going to be better going into this next year? Nobody? I do. I think it'll be easier to buy. I think you're going to see the type of uh, market pushing price up. Like, right. So we're going to be able to buy more, but we're not going to be able to sell. It be more predictable. Right. So the, the prices that I probably had in the beginning. It's probably more likely what I would have gotten in a normal market, maybe two fifty. Um, so I don't know what kind of formula you guys use when you buy. I had, um, like I said, this group of women investors I was watching for a while, and they said, which I haven't found one like this yet, but they said you should pay seventy percent. You should figure out what it's going to sell for, and then you want to pay seventy percent of that, less the cost that you think it's going to cost you to redo the property. Well, I would have had to have gotten this house for a hundred thousand. And I knew that wasn't going to happen. Right. So I, mean, I got close to my seventy-five percent with the cost. So really, I figure if I can get sixty, you know, seventy-five percent, eighty percent, and then take out the cost. But again, remembering to put everything in there because I I didn't put the closing my closing cost. The realtor fees were like twelve thousand. So if you should go back to the very beginning, you said something about part of uh, you got a so how did you get the funding? So we have um, money and investments with our investment financial advisor. And so I called him and said, you know, we're I don't want to go to a hard money lender, and we really don't want to pull money out of stocks or any of our investments. And he said, Oh, you have a access credit line where it really doesn't pull the money out, you're just borrowing against it. And it's a variable <laughs> rate. And it was like I think four and a half percent. Is that um, a margin loan? That yes. Yeah. A what? It's like a margin. margin. It's called a margin loan. Margin. You have okay. stocks. Yeah. You can, you can that for almost all of them. So they said you have X number of dollars that you can pull out at any time. 
for anything you want. But they said a lot of people use it for the investment. So it wasn't, if we just pulled the money out, we could have put it in there and not have the monthly payment. But no, we'd never done a flip before. I didn't know if we were going to lose it all and what was going to happen. And I thought, okay, we're, you know, let's just take it out as a loan. Because I called a hard money lender. They were, we were going to pay 10 or 12% on that, which is way too much. And then to get, just to go to a regular lender, you're not going to be able to do a quick close. And then they're funding about their investor loans too. Is anyone, has anyone done one just taking out a regular loan with an investor or did you just cash on the <laughs> Just a 30 day? Well, I, so I didn't for, I did it for a hold. Oh, okay. So then you don't have to, it's just holding an investment property. Yeah, I mean, for rent, I mean, it's a rental property. A rental, okay. Did you keep it that way or did you refinance it at some time? Or? No. Okay. Yes. How many yes. can you carry? Someone told me you can only carry four. Oh, you can do four. Okay, can you break that down? Because I have no idea what you said. So you can go to like your typical mortgage broker that you would go to for a residential purchase. And a lot of them will do investment loans as well. But you can only carry like four okay. at a time. Okay. I know we were looking at doing investment, but since the rates were going up, I called the Sunday we work with and she said, well, you can, I would tell you to do an arm, but we don't, to do an arm for an investment property, they have, this lender has huge fees because <clears throat> they don't make enough money on it if you're buying and flipping it. And so they really don't want to do that. So the arms are a little bit tougher on an investment one. But I have a lot of clients doing arms right now, hoping that the rates may come down a little um, in the next year or so. So I don't know if you guys know of any lenders that will do investment loans with an arm. Specifically for flips, you're saying? Yeah. Don't want it paid off. That's on, right. Hundred days. Right, yeah. because they're not going to make any money on it. So, and you know, you could tell them, oh yeah, we're buying it for ourselves, and then turn around and change your mind and sell it. But um, <laughs> after a while, they catch up and they figure out what you're doing. Um, I mean, I would say we are looking at doing another one, and what I will be more careful of this next time is one, just being sure. I mean, I felt like we knew this market. It wasn't an area we lived in, but we had the pricing pretty correct. Uh, it's just the market did go way up, thank goodness, and we were able to get a lot more for it. Where's that located? Okay. It is over in Warren Township, inside 465, um, just <laughs> south of 10th Street is where we were. Wow. Um, but it's it really close to Irvington. We were just like two streets over from Irvington. Um, mm -hmm. You go to the industry crossover and you were at the golf course there. So it was a great location. It's just the neighborhood. You had people live there forever. The homes just don't turn over very often. So there really weren't many comps for us to use in the first place. Unless I went further out. Country Club Estates. I don't even know the, the names of some of those. Uh, but we just kind of got to know our street. And it was, it, the other thing is if you can find an investment property closer to you, we spent, I didn't even average in the gas. Thank God we didn't have the gas prices we have now. That would have really equal to um, you know, profits. <clears throat> Because it was a good 45 minutes, and I was going over sometimes twice a day wow. to check on things. Uh, um, it was just a, a young family. So a first-time home buyer. Well, actually, they were they were in their 40s, but they were first-time home buyers. Okay. Yeah, and um, the, we had two offers, both of them were first-time home buyers. So we went with an FHA loan, which I was hesitant to do, but we had done so much work on the house that there really wasn't anything that they called out. And, you know, we knew if we sold it within the first three months, we really needed to wait because if, if there's a flip rule, so if you, if you done, I know you've asked a few questions. So if you have a flip, you have to wait three months to sell it to anyone who's getting an FHA loan. And VA, right? And does VA have the flip rule? Sure. I'm not sure about VA. I don't know. I just know with the FHA, you have to wait three months before you can sell it to somebody with an FHA. You can sell it to someone for cash and you can sell it to someone for a conventional loan. But just not the FHA. Um, really, so I would say we got very lucky. We did great. Uh, ended up with, like I said, sixty-one thousand um, as a profit. I wish I could take credit for buying so well and knowing I was going to make sixty thousand. <coughs> but it was a pleasant surprise. Right. But it just really kind of reiterated that I really, we really need to be careful when we're buying and not jumping into something just because we found something that we thought was great. We really need to investigate it and look close and be sure is there really money to be made. 
I don't know if any of you work with investors, but I have investors call me all the time. They're like, oh, we can put 50,000 in this, we can flip it, we're good. And I said, you're going to have fees when you sell it, you're going to have fees when you buy it. You know, I know there are, some of these are builders, so they don't have as much carrying cost, and you know, their, their materials cost is less than mine. But they forget, oh, yeah, we have to have insurance and we have to have this, that, and the other. Then all of a sudden, I've talked about buying it, which is not what I wanted to do, but um, I just want them to know the cost is up high. So does anybody else have questions or okay. when you do it again <laughs> what, what type of house are you looking for we're actually trying to stay i, I mean i right now i don't feel comfortable buying a more expensive yeah. flip i'd rather stay buy something in the mid 100 you know, 150 140 and would you like something with less work or um or you know, then this one, or... I didn't mind the work on this one. We took walls, you know, we opened up walls, which was fine. And we did the kitchen. Um, I think to make money, sometimes you have to find the ones that are Dollars. Yeah, a mess yeah. to get the money on them. Um, and well, in this past year, if you found something that wasn't too bad, people were buying it to fix it up to live with it. So unless it was just in horrible shape, couldn't get it anyway. Um, but I don't, I mean, I've got, Looked at a couple of houses that would have sold maybe for six or seven hundred thousand. I just don't feel comfortable enough putting that much money on the line until I have a better better group of contractors. I think you need to have some of those people that you can count on all the time. Um, and we ended up calling separate people, like an electrician and a plumber we knew, and a drywall guy we knew, and so we had to finish managing it ourselves. But we had good contractors, and we were able to get it done. There were still things I would think we should have done on the property that we didn't, but then it would pay. We just didn't have any more money to put into it. And it didn't matter. We sold it anyway. But um, yeah, I mean, I feel like if you can get something in that 100 to 150 range and be able to sell it in the upper twos to 300, Dude, you're getting a decent buyer. Um, so, a few questions. Did you factor in your capital gains tax? No, and I'm still talking to my accountant about that because we bought it through the through our company. We bought it, and the money that we made off of it is still sitting in there to go into another property. We paid my son worked as project manager, so we paid him not as a member of the company. He got I me. Mean, he got paid as an independent contractor. So after paying him, we have this thirty thousand dollars, and we're not sure since it was. Purchased through the company. I, I, I don't know yet because it's not a, it wasn't a personal purchase. So I'm waiting to find out. <laughs> are we going to get hit capital gains on the 30000 or if we reinvest that into another property? Are we not? We didn't do a 1031 exchange, but I didn't know the 1031 exchange was just mm -hmm. if it was personal. Do you know? Uh -huh. They don't. It's rental to rental. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if you can't do a personal, and then unless you turn your personal into a rental for like a year or 18 months, right. and then you can go, but it's like kind of like kind of, I can't go from residential, personal to rental. Well, right. What about the 30? So like the 30,000 30, that, that, that I have, I have 30,000 profit on that I really have to be paid everybody. It's sitting in our business account, so we haven't taken it. It's yeah, I would say your company is going to get taxed on it in that fiscal year as profit, or you're going to have it as a pass through entity and you're going to pay taxes on it as a K1 on your individual. Well, that just went right over my head, but I would <laughs> <laughs> personally. John from the CPA that talked about the taxing and the assessment and Right. In our industry, I mean, that's a great question. I mean, I just took one and I need a spreadsheet and who is that? John. John. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. but a couple months ago or last yeah. month or something like that mm -hmm. on specifically how we all need to be fine to invest in taxes. Okay, so like I said, I haven't taken the money in our entire account because I've been horrible with my taxes this year because I haven't filed one yet. So once I get that done, I'll know exactly. And we really don't want to buy anything else until we figure out how we're working that with the company. So did you buy yours through your company? Okay. So John told me you buy the Yuzula Group you buy flips. Okay. So if it's under 12 months, Yuzula right. Group, because I can write that off against my income. Okay. Um, and I'll depreciate it as well. So I'll be able to take like 50 k against any any profits I get. 
So are you holding that as a as a it'll rental a or is it a flip? It's a flip. Okay. So it'll be uh, if everything goes right, it'll be gone. And then if I buy it to hold, then you buy it. I've got a separate three holding properties. That's a separate LLC for okay. for holds that I do. So don't put it in your holding unless you are going to hold it for more okay. than a year. Um, and don't buy it in your personal name. Yeah, so we didn't, but we bought it in, we set up a separate investment company to do all our properties through, so it's separate from my real estate business group. Yeah. I'm so curious. I think I have it set up right. Yeah, I just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just yeah, going to touch the money right now, so it's just sitting there. It's an yeah. LLC. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's an LLC. We set up a separate LLC, but then I did go talk to John. Um, that's who's going to help me. Of course, I've just been bad and haven't gone to talk to them. But um, he did say, even though I set up an LLC, he said he wanted to run it as a sub something under my original LLC. Those are things that I don't understand, so I'm just going to let somebody else do them for me. I'm just trying to figure out how I don't pay <coughs> tax. So that'll be another class, but when I get it out, <laughs> I can come do that. Did you have a question back here? Mm -hmm. uh, I kind of touched on it, but one of the things I'm seeing with some of that I work with is they're not really working anymore with the correct contractors because they, they're working with project managers. Right. Because the project managers are the ones that are going to fund or going to manage that project. And they're going to be way more available, or at least in the case of the cost of the project manager is much more available to take questions randomly throughout the day. Of course, contractors can often be very hard to get a hold of because they should be working, right, um, and doing your project. But they also, I mean, with a good project manager, and it's going to cost you a little bit of money to have it done, but especially the folks that I work with, a lot of them are out of state. Um, they get a lot of work with pictures and video and, and a phone call and everything. So for those that aren't available to project manage themselves, um, I would recommend hiring a project manager to walk to manage that contract. Right. We hired a general contract. That's what we did because <coughs> we didn't want to have to do it ourselves. Yeah. So we hired this guy and he had the electricians, the plumber, he had everything. So I wasn't supposed to have to go out there. He was going to come by, he said, every two or three days. He was showing up at the project once every two weeks. And that was only if we called him and said, You haven't been here. And he'd say, Yes, we have. And I'm like, Well, no, because you don't, you don't even know what's going on. I mean, I would talk to him about things that he should have known. And then he would say he'd been there and we knew he hadn't because we'd ask the contractors and say, well, did Alex stop by? No, we haven't seen Alex in a week. So we tried that route. We just hired the wrong person. Be not a general contractor. The project manager that I work with, I don't even know, well, I know one of his contractors, but I don't know most of his contractors. I don't see them, I don't talk with them, and I don't pull with them. The project manager does all of that. Cindy, what is that percentage of their percentage? Is their percentage? Yes, there is a percentage, and it's actually not huge. I have a, 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 a sheet that has goes through all of his, and I, I, I can't remember off the top of my head what it is. But I have seen um, a bit of a doubt. And it's definitely worth the cost. So well, it's a third and party it's that oversees. It's a third party. He is the project manager. He hires the contractors. <clears throat> but most, he has contractors that he's already, so contracting teams. So depending on the job, because I, I have a lot of smaller jobs, because I do a lot of small, you know, smaller homes. So he's got, you know, teams that really specialize in a little two bedroom, one bath. And he'll knock it out in four to six weeks. And then he's got teams that can do down to the studs, you know, flip on the 2,000 plus foot of homes. Right. But he's the one that, and he'll go through with the contract, you know, he goes through the contractor, walks the property, he's still working on the and all of that. But it's just been for the people that I'm working with that are flipping, it's great because he is uh, their point of contact. He doesn't have to try to contact the plumber. Doesn't have to contract either get the you know electrician but a one person and they're that's their go to. Right, so that's what I'm confused because that's what I hired was a general contractor. We hired the plumber, he hired the electrician, he did all that. 
So he hired them all for me. So I didn't have to hire them and I didn't have to oversee them. So he was the guy, I was paying him a fee to run the job. So I didn't have to fire, I didn't have to hire a plumber, I didn't hire anybody. He didn't. And he was not working on the job. He was Oh no, he never showed up. <laughs> but he was supposed to. Yes. 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 Okay. That so was his project, job. The, 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 the difference I'm talking about is the project manager. He doesn't work on the projects at all. Oh, he doesn't work actually. He, he doesn't work on the projects. He didn't. And yes. it's been, it really has worked great because I've seen the contractors. Some contractors work, like you said, the pig on the, or the lipstick yeah. on the pig. And the clients are left saying, what the heck happened in here? You know? Wow. So again, but I, I tend to have, you know, smaller projects. So it's a relative small fee. And they have folks in mind and they have full access to. I mean, oh, yeah. Small. We're saying there's many. Yeah. If, if someone had been on the job yeah. besides us. Um, yeah. But the guy we hired to run it just never came out. So how did you handle your list with the other contractors after the first one? I had an Excel spreadsheet of everything that was wrong. Wow. And then we handed it to you the guys and they came in and priced it out. So I had a plumbing sheet, an electrical sheet. But luckily, being in the business, I think we had more knowledge than a lot of people would have going in. So I knew when things, I knew if something wasn't wired correctly. I knew how to test the outlets to see if they were working. I knew if plumbing was not working correctly. Um, of course, when you go to flush the toilet and nothing happens, you automatically know that's not working. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's yeah, it was <laughs> um, But the drywall work was so far. We had to have the whole house completely repainted. They would touch up paint with different sheens all through the house, and then they'd go to a color match, and it would match. So we kind of just had to have the whole thing. That was three thousand dollars to have the whole place. Um, there was a floor in the bathroom in the basement that we pull a tile up, and I said, "Just do the LVT. That's fine. We won't." Well, the floor wasn't very level, but the tile they had leveled it out. Well, they went ahead and laid the LVP, so the floor was like this. So we have it all ripped out. They had to bring in a self leveling compound, another contractor, to level the floor out, reset the toilet, reset everything. But they thought it was fine. I'm like, it's not a big deal. I'm like, well, the, the vanity is like this. everything was crooked. So um, I guess I guess find a contractor that you think has your standards. And I know they're all busy and wanting to get work done. That could change, and then there's Sure. Well, I think some of that too is that you're sure. Yeah, but like you know, it's like don't start me as playing with me something that might never should happen. But they, but they still go, oh, this is fine. You don't understand. I said, oh no, I understand. Right, <laughs> I do, and this is not acceptable. You know, it's right. not like you're saying, oh no, this is fine. And I was like, well, it's not fine. Had you know, people are coming to a corner with a gap that's almost two inches wide. They go, oh, just caulk it. Like you know, you won't just caulk it. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't work. Yeah. So, again, I think having the knowledge that Beverly said, we already know what quality work looks like and what needs to be done. So, um, I would love to be able to do it and not be so involved. The whole idea would be to put it out there. But then I do have my son, who is next time just going to be the project manager. So, we don't have to, we'll just pay him if I'm going to pay someone. He knows building and construction. He knows real estate. So, I told him the next time, I said, you just handle the whole thing. Just call me and tell me when I'm going to get Mm -hmm. You know, I'll, I'll put the money up front, you know, we'll get the contractor in there and take care of being sure that it's done <clears throat> and staying on top of it. But I think it's, if you set the tone in the beginning, I think I was too nice in the beginning and letting things go. And because it's not my personality to so not be that way. But I think sometimes you just have to set that standard. But this is, these are my expectations. And if it doesn't work that way, then there's going to be a problem and we're going to stop. And because I was costing him time <clears throat> because they were having to redo it. They were really glad to be fired. I mean, they had their things out of the house in about 30 minutes <laughs> from the time we told them to go. Um, so, yeah, we were just, he said we were very different than any other investor he worked with. I'm like, well, tell me where their houses are because I don't want to sell them. Right? <laughs> yeah, don't worry. Contractors lie. Do what? Contractors lie. Not all there, there's, there are, just there are some women. Yeah. yeah, there's good people out there. So it'll be interesting this year to see when the market slows down just a little bit. And uh, hopefully they're not quite as busy. And you're going to see if we really, the people who are really able to be in there with the work done, because you won't just have to hurt anyone to get something taken care of. And we were at that point by the end. We just wanted it finished. 
but then I didn't want a bad job again. I mean, we were in there doing work ourselves, which is not a problem, but there's only so much I can do. How are you going to find your next property? Yeah, that's a good question. I've been um, looking at some different classes, trying to figure out, um, looking at properties going into probate, looking at um, properties in the States where someone has died and the family gets them and they don't want them. Um, I know you can go to the courthouse. It's just learning how to do that. And I'm, do you know how to do it? Does anyone in here kind of know how to track those yeah, things? How do you? I mean, it's very time consuming. It's horribly time consuming. Right. It really is. So do I, do I hire someone to go do all that? Do re, you know, pay them to research the properties and bring us something? Um, because I feel like there's a lot of people out there right now looking for investment properties. And I feel like a lot of people have kind of been sitting back with the way the market was this year. And waiting for them to come up, but then again, are they going to sell like they were? Everything is selling. I mean, how does anyone else find their property? I'm going on to the VLC, probably it's, that's where everybody is. So, unless you happen to be the one to get your offer accepted, I think that's a tough, tough place to go. Um, does anyone else have ideas? On one way is to be really aware, um, just like it. So just be very aware as you're driving around of, and see a home that's not tap up in the yard, it's not mud or something like right. that. Check <laughs> into it that way. You know, it's not kind of so. Yeah, it wouldn't be more time consuming. Right. But and yeah, then, driving through, kind of, and I feel we have certain areas we might like to target. Yeah. So kind of narrowing down on those and then keeping your eyes out mm -hmm. to see if there's a home that looks like it's coming out. And my eyes are from a client. So. Yeah, which I think is fantastic. We know that if generating part of it is generating the database, you know, if you know if anyone is looking to you know sell, buy, or invest, or if you know of anyone to sell a house, you know, at a sale in a situation. Right. You know, just asking and like even identifying yourself as like being part, if you don't feel like you're an investor yet, you could say, you know, I'm part of an investor club that may have some interest. Do you see how like the gradual and suddenly kind of like the rough or pants? How many years of this? 20. 20. 20 yeah. Okay. And so she had a new thought along the way here recently that said, I think I'm going to do a flip, right? And so even if you feel like you're not there yet, you could say, this may be this property may be a candidate for my investor. Like <laughs> here. See, right. Um, that can be a small step in the conversation. I mean, I had to get over feeling like I was taking the house from her and that she could have made more money mm -hmm. doing it on her own. So, but I was very honest with her. I mean, I ran numbers. I showed her a spreadsheet, and I said, "You could make fifteen to twenty thousand more, honestly, if I put it on the market. I can't guarantee that. But that's kind of what the numbers are showing." Sometimes it's not about the money though. Like, cause so, so my husband serves senior citizens as a lot of you know, <laughs> and this is actually how he gets his flips because he serves them. So, but he offers both opportunities right. and make sure the family always knows. So they don't think he's trying to come in and like, I just take it away. Correct. Right. Cause that is a feeling of. Yeah. And I realized um, that was not her, her, it wasn't money for her. Right. You know, her, like, this was her money for money when she retired, but she said, she goes, this is on me and I can't do it. I, I can't clean it out. Yeah. I can't deal with it anymore. I just, if you tell me you can close on this in two weeks, take it off my plate. Yeah. It, it's Some, yours. Sometimes it's just about the ease of getting it done. Right. Yeah. So I made it easy for her and we yep. were able to close. And I mean, she gave me the keys. And whenever, before I put it on the market, because this is the house she grew up in. I sent the pictures to her and I said, before this goes on the market, I want you to see it first. Yep. <laughs> just so you know, I said, if you want to come look at it, um, you know, I know this is where you grew up. So I said, I just want to take that into account. I don't you know, just throw it out there and have it on Facebook. She's on my Facebook page. Smart. And she was very appreciative. She mm -hmm. said, you yep. know what? She said, you changed it so much. It's not even, yep. there's no connection there. But she said, I'm excited for the next family that's coming in. But thank you so much for considering that whenever you put it out there. And I said, well, show it to your mom too, because it's her house. So. Her mom was fine. She did, didn't care. My mind, I'm always thinking about the money, so it surprises me that the money would be an important thing to people. But, um, Sometimes it's stress, taking the yeah, stress away. What's exactly. what's their pain point? Right. Okay, so on the flip side, I have a house um, that eight, 
that the offer pad and things like that. But how do we, what's the best way to get out? But you have a big room of people right here. Right? <laughs> right, yeah. I was going to say, I'll talk to you. I have, yeah. the, I have a whole Canva thing ready to print. Oh, you know. <laughs> okay, good. Oh, there, I, I mean, yeah. Doug said before there's an email, but I don't know what that email is. And then uh, Mary was just talking about doing investor Facebook, which I can start that private Facebook club for our investor group. Yeah. Really that idea. would be awesome. Wait, you could, Sometimes you just got vomited to do that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to create. the moment, buyer and seller possibilities is already a prime groove for anything that you have in your pipeline, whether it's retail or investment. Is that, that isn't just our office, is it? It is. Okay. Oh, good. So I was saying, if you have a house, I would share it with everyone in here because yeah. you have a lot of people looking for properties. I mean, where, I can, where is it? It's in uh, Franklin. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> is it Utah? It's not helpful. My hometown. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So anyone looking for an investment property in Franklin? <laughs> about here today. Franklin Township. Oh, Franklin. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So that's, that's yeah, that's yeah. different than Franklin. Clarity's power. Okay. What's the price point? Here, it's right here. Right, that's after, after the meeting. After the meeting. Okay. I don't think you can cast it. Kristen could cast it up there. Wait, what, what do you need? Sorry. <laughs> her picture. A picture of her property. That she's <clears> going to. <throat> Where do you need it? Sorry. I'm Nothing. Go ahead. Okay. Finish the meeting. Oh, up there, you mean? You want it up there? No, we're okay. Going to keep okay. Going. okay, got it. <laughs> got it. So, I would say, I don't know if you have anything that, that you're looking to sell, this would be the group to uh, to put it out there. Sounds like everybody's. And is, are most everyone here looking to do something, either a flip or an investment property? Yes. In the near future? Yes. So, we all have to figure out where they're going to come from. Pam, how would you get a property in Zion's? How would I get one in Zionsville? I have a pretty big network of agents in Zionsville that just know a lot of people. So typically, if I'm looking for something off market or don't you think, Louise is, Jay's in there. I mean, there's probably like 40 or so agents that when we have something coming up or something we need, we're sending an email out. Um, that's where I found out about these different things yep. in town. Um, that's probably the best way. Because some agent is going to know, it. I mean, if it's coming up, there's someone in town that's going to know about it. Carmel's so much bigger, but I think Zion's going to lend itself to being small enough that we can easily hear about it. Mm-hmm. You guys hear about everything. You and Robin and Morris. <laughs> <laughs> you and Robin and Aaron and the whole group. Um, <clears throat> yeah, because if not, you're just waiting for it to pop online. So, oh, and it's also just being involved in groups, you know, different networking. Um, things in town. So I think with Carmel seems like it'd be a little tougher getting a network going just because it's so much bigger. But I don't know, do you guys have places in Carmel that you go look? Yeah, I like your idea. I walk around and I see something that looks shabby. Yep. Wow. Has looked shabby for the last six months. <laughs> it's got my interest, you know? Yeah. You buy, you know, a 1,100 square foot home. Or you know, I don't know, maybe let's call round numbers two hundred, sell it for three. Why? I don't know. So there's another thing to that, that is to uh, go through real lists and find out like who's owned their property for twenty or thirty years, and uh, many times those people are. Maybe even wanting to consider it, but they're just overwhelmed with what the first step is and how to go about it. And so, just just um, reaching out to them and and making sure they end. I always like to get um, family members. I always tell them that I want to make sure that your family is included in this somewhere along the line because I do not want to change of you. I want to. Because many times, even though they may seem like they're with it, yep. they can't remember, or it's all foreign information to them. So they'll take that information and they'll read it 
and it sits out totally different. And so then the family's like, you are doing what? You know, and, and you have to really handle it differently because you have to take all those things into consideration. But I have a, a client who actually the government was going in a neighborhood that he wanted to buy in, and he would send me these properties with contact information <laughs> for all these people. And uh, uh, I would call them and, and uh, had great conversations with them, you know, I would go knock on their door. And But you just have to handle it differently because you yeah, gonna, it's going to be a longer process as well because they're not going to be able to make quick decisions usually yep. unless they're in a dire circumstance and they might just really do that. But it's uh, I have done that in the past and I've helped people who are having dementia issues and they can't yep. realize it because <laughs> they they just would be in communication with them often enough to understand what was going on and. Um, I mean, there's all sorts of different things that you'll find going on, so you have to be very aware when you're talking. Yeah, because sometimes they won't, if if they are having memory issues, sometimes uh, they won't remember entire conversations. Yeah. And then they'll, my husband even had a client had a full conversation with, and then um, the client told, like a couple of days later, that told the family that didn't even remember the conversation. So what does that look like? Like he's trying to come in and take advantage. So you exactly. have to include the family yeah. as soon as you can. Yeah. I, I'm about the first phone call. I mean, the first visit yep. to get their information. If you go that route. Yeah. 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 I have one other family that I wasn't thinking about doing a clip at the time, so I did it for them. And then the contract right now, and it was my client's sister. They found her in her house. Like, there were pathways mm -hmm. through the house. Yep. That's right. She was a hoarder. And there was the back bedroom was so full of mold that the walls were caving in. Yep. Oh, it's really it was, sad. It was awful. So, um, they sold it. I mean, I told them, I said, I can sell it for you, but it's going to be, I mean, I got charged like 1%. I knew I was going to help the investor sell it. I mean, I just want to get it out from under it, and she needed X million dollars to get out from under the mortgage. So we worked with her to get her out from under that. It was the saddest thing. Mm -hmm. Every family goes, just get her, mm -hmm. just break even. That's all they need. Yep. So we did not have to get her to break even, and that comes up for me all kinds of money on that house. I wish I had thought about it. It was kind of though, probably more than I would. So I think sometimes they're worse off because he had to do major work to the crawl space and take out walls with no remediation. So I think you kind of also have to know your limits. Yeah. What are you willing to work with? Um, sometimes it's just too much work, too expensive. The other place you can look, which there wasn't much on there this year, but in Boone County, and I'm sure they have it in Hamilton too, is the share sale site. Yep. So people are. I don't, it's kind of a delicate situation if someone's going through short sale or being sold because they haven't paid their taxes. <coughs> I don't know quite how to approach them. But last year, there haven't been that, and I think there's going to be more um, in the next couple of years. Um, years. Yeah, it's the ones that have been on and off for quite a bit. You watch those, and then at some point, and but then I think even if you buy a house on the point house steps, some of those you have to wait a year, don't you? They have yes. a year of right of redemption. Yes. So you have to wait to sell those. So those are more more hold and to keep them in rent until you know you have it hundred percent. I know I have a client once, I don't work with anymore, who would do that, hoping they would come back mm -hmm. because then he would charge them, you know, the whatever to sell it back to them. When they gave it back, I think they have to pay him. Isn't it like five percent for six months and ten percent? Yeah, so he would make money off these poor people. Someone's going to do it. I mean, I couldn't do that. That's just another way. People are making money off people who can't afford to be in the house. So, um, yeah, so I think the main thing is kind of brainstorm and figure out how to find the next one. It sounds like. All the same boat. <laughs> or like tell your sphere if you've become like you, you start telling the people you know that you already work with kind of that to be on the radar for you have they can start you know if they that's see some, yeah if they see something that's yeah, not that's a great touch point to yeah people, let a reason to call yeah right. so really on the sheet um i actually on the back page is just kind of detail more what our costs were just so you can get an idea of where we spent all the money and change orders. If you can avoid change orders, that's a good thing too, because that it's just not knowing what you don't know that tends to add up. So I'm hoping the next time I do one, those, you know, there'll be new things that come up, but I won't have the same things come up. Um, and I'll know what's going 
Oh, thanks. Yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, sure. yeah, super I was telling Mary, I kind of like I was in college. I was up till two in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Cramming. <laughs> college and I just have to change it all. So, <laughs> but yeah, just a little more detail on all the steps. So. I think that's it. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. I want to say one thing. If you're hiring somebody, whether it's a general contractor or whoever, go to mycase.in.gov and name in and the name in. Oh, perfect. Because um, mycase.in.gov, you can put their contractor name or their company name in. And if they've been sued, or you can, I even do it with people now, I'm starting to do it with people I rent to. Oh, you know, oh, you do you tenant screening? I want to know. Mycase.in.gov. Yes. Um, somebody online said, hold on, I don't know when she said this. Oh, PropStream is a good application that you can use for all kinds of lists, own long out of states, divorce, forbearance. PropStream. Prop That's right there. PropStream. I paid for it every month and I have not used it. <laughs> One of those things that you sign up for as a realtor and get to sign in. So I should use it. I think a lot. P R O P is here. Yeah, it's right up there. I can't see that. It's yeah, it's, it looks like it's one word. And then Beverly, what was the site that you just shared? Uh my case. Uh -huh. dot I -N dot go. Thank you. <laughs> I think it's not good. Yeah, so. It probably is. Shows everything. It shows if you get a speeding ticket. Does it really? Yeah. <laughs> you can look up anyway. That's what we're doing after this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, Pam, thank you so much for taking the time yeah. and uh, sharing your experience. I know I got a lot of value out of that. So we look forward to seeing you next month for our August meeting. Thank you, Doug. Thank you. I did put that.